In order to run the phosphorus test, we use the Kometz method, which is a glass ampule uh, that you mix your, your water in. First, for these, check the expiration dates on your two comparators and on the bottle of activator solution. In order to run the test, first fill the plastic vial in the test kit up to the 25 milliliter line, which is this top arrow on the bottle. Add two drops of the activator solution. Put the lid on the bottle and shake briefly to mix. Pull the lid off. Remove one of the glass ampules from the box. These are under vacuum so that when you break the tip off of the ampule underwater it sucks up the solution. On the bottle there are little scallops along the outside edge. You'll want to set the tip of the vial in one of the scallops and then squeeze back against the outside wall of the container. When the tip snaps, you'll hear it and there'll be a sucking sound as the solution is pulled up into the glass vial. So we snap it off. You can see that the, the tube is now full. And then move it up and down and mix with the bubble. Then you'll let it set for two minutes for the color to develop. These don't fade as quickly as the strips, so if you're over two minutes, don't worry about it. In order to uh, read the test once you've waited two minutes and the color is developed, first start with the flat plate. Um, this one reads from one to ten parts per million of phosphate. So you'll take your tube and compare the color of the tube to the various colors or shades of blue on this plate. If it's below one, you then go to this comparator, which is basically like a kaleidoscope. It measures from zero to one parts per million phosphate. But in order to show you the, the plate, we've developed a darker solution. You see that it's darker than one, darker than three, a little darker than four, somewhere lighter than six. So it's around a five parts per million of phosphate. So going back to the lighter sample, since this was fairly close to one, a little lighter just looking at this to get a more accurate measurement, put it flat side down into the center of the kaleidoscope thing, and then hold it towards a light source looking up through the bottom and find the tube around the outside edge that most closely matches in color the tube in the center, which is the sample that you just put in there. So for this one, it's around a point three. If you look up through the bottom, you can see it matches down here, and then you match that to the number on the outside of the tube.
if there's a lot of sediment in your sample, your tube can be an off color, like a dark gray or brown, in which case you can either filter out your sample before running the test or set the tube on its side overnight and let the sediment filter and settle down at the bottom of the tube and then read it. Um, another common, or not exactly common, but another uh, problem that can occur is too much phosphorus in the water for the level of this test kit. It only reads up to 10 parts per million. If the level of phosphate in the water is over that, oftentimes there will, the tube will turn green and there will be a, a chunky precipitate that forms in the tube. If this occurs, you can either use another test that reads higher, such as the Hox phosphorus strips, or dilute your sample to a level, try half or one to ten, and see if you can get a reading using a diluted sample. Since these ampules are glass and you've broken the tip off of them, disposal is a little bit trickier than with the test strips where you can just throw them in, a tra in the trash. If you're in a lab situation, you can dispose of them in the broken glass container. Or if you're at home, either set them inside something hard or just be aware that there is broken glass in your trash and don't let small children take it out or whatever. Um, we do recommend that since these do have a broken glass component, that if you are using the tests with smaller children to closely supervise and not allow them to come into contact with the broken glass.